Yeah, buddy. Okay, well, we've done that three or four times now. Everything we can see is bereft of the hand of man. It's powerful and it's these animals, these mountains, these plants, they're doing the same thing they did a thousand years ago. And they're doing the same thing they're gonna do a thousand years after I'm dead. And, and to me, it gives me the sense of, of the brevity of a human life and how important it is to, to do things that make you feel alive. This is basically our tool kit. We've got a set of adjustable pliers that don't really work, and we've got a socket. What'd I tell you? We gotta get him off here now because if it gets worse, he won't get down tomorrow. Better than nothing. I'll agree with you there. <laughs> the rule on this hunt is the one that builds the paddle uses the paddle. I'm gonna take this thing home with me after the trip. We'll carve our names in it. Yeah. See you guys. See you. See you. The potential to be out there for three or four days alone is a definite possibility. Do you have all the gear you need to be able to hang out there until I get back, you know, if the weather comes in? All the mandatory yeah, I gear. I so, and I mean, you know, honestly, in a situation like that, mindset is a huge one too. Being alone in the wilderness, you know, it's probably gonna be a few hours, but it could be, like you said. Could be a few days. days. You gotta be mentally prepared for that possibility. Yeah, most people, if things go bad, they just don't know what to do or how to, you know, how to react. And then the mind starts to play tricks, right? and then it goes bad from there. And I have confidence in my team, which I think any team that you're on in life, whether it's your family or your business or your hunting team, you, you gotta choose that team carefully. And that's why I came out here with you guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was a smart move, Trap. <laughs> I hope it was. Uh, before the days of this kind of messaging system, there was a lot of days where you'd have buddies sitting in the bush just wondering what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And that's never a good feeling. There's a bit of a logistics to this one. It's getting remote and looking for big caribou. You know, Greg, one thing that strikes me about all this is what the folks are seeing on TV usually is us hiking around on big, long hikes and paddles, and, and that's most of the journey, but to get there, you know, it's really, what you're doing in the Yukon, it's like hunting the whole Western United States. These journeys, it's like me going from Colorado through Wyoming, through Montana, and then hunting in Idaho. And that's basically what we, we've done the last couple days just to get here, and now we gotta fly again. It's a big territory, and there's a, there's a lot of country, and you know, there's certain areas that hold specific games, so we try to find those areas and figure out a way to get to them. And a lot of times it takes aircraft because there's literally like four major roads in this whole territory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's fly. Okay. <laughs>
ton. I got dropped off here a number of hours ago and had to wait for the team to come in. And I tell you what, for, for me, that's a big high. There's not many places in the lower 48 where you can get and be without sight of people. It's special just to, to be there, taking it in, did a little bit of glassing, looking for some animals, saw a bald eagle. I'm loving it. Right now, we may not have to worry about not having a whole pile of fuel because we may not be able to get the engine going. Good for spinning circles. Once again, best laid plans don't go as planned. Brand new engine and we can't get it going. So I don't know if it's me or if it's the engine, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing everything right. I can't even get the cord out, so not so good. Just so you know, it's in neutral as well. We'll still use the boat and we'll just paddle. That'll be, the, that'll be the operation for this hunt, unless I can figure it out. Let's get hunting. One thing I do know is typically when an engine goes down, you can still count on your body. Well, that's true. It's a big mountain we can hike up in glass, so that's the plan. And I think a big piece of what we've learned over the years is you got to play the cards you're dealt, and uh, we're playing them. Exactly. There's still a mountain, there's still caribou. <laughs> Incredible steam coming off the lake. I don't know what the temperature was last night, but it was cold, probably minus five, I guess. Yeah, all our water was frozen, that's for sure. Boots felt like a freezer putting them on. You wanna keep this thing straight so I can glass, please? <laughs> Fall colors are literally changing before our eyes. Yellows, reds, oranges, just popping everywhere. Pretty cool, huh? Kinda hard to see because the boat's not going straight, but. Yeah, even the moose just barely stick out up above those, huh? Otter. Look at the otter. Oh, yeah. Four of them. Yeah, look at the whole family. Whole family wow. otters. Wow. Oh, they're coming right at us. Look at them. Yeah. That was fantastic. We may be moving a lot slower than we expected, but one thing I've learned about hunting is a lot of times it's about patience, and when you're going slow, you can see stuff. I don't have patience for this. <laughs> Today, we're just gonna go up high and figure it out from there. Hopefully we find something, or at least we see a lot of good country and be able to make a good game plan because we are early in the hunt still. We still have to get the, kind of the lay of the land of this, this whole area so that we can figure out where the best opportunity to get a good caribou would be. And the only way to do that is to get up high and really be able to see what's going on. Let's get some elevation and some body heat going yeah. here. Hunting in these places, the, the temperature maintenance is a significant challenge. And I know right now my toes are literally ice solid because my boots are kind of wet and they froze solid overnight. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> hoping something changes. It's kind, of, it's kind of part of the program. I think we got some grizzly fur here. It does look like uh, with the brown tips, right? And the, and the white on it. Yeah. But that's right off the hump of moose. Moose beds right here. This Trav. A few more cold nights like that and a week and a half and things will change around here, that's for sure. And those other bulls will just start coming in because there's a pile of cows in this country. Yep. I'm not getting tired of it, Greg. Well, that's a good thing. There's a cow right over there right now. That's an indication, you know, you just pull up the binoculars and you can see a cow. So that's really cool, eh? Gone a while, but we still got a long way to go up there. Just one foot in front of the other, right? So, what do you think is the best route here, Greg? I'm aiming for the drainage. Get into the rocks, and then just work our way up the rocks. 
get us out of the willow as soon as we can. Yep. I think that'll be faster. Moose make it look easy in these willows. It ain't easy. 